Hey all you addicts out there, welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. Today what we're doing is we're taking you guys by the hand and we're showing you from start to finish how to set up and go fishing through these beautiful trout that we have in these stocked lakes and ponds all over the United States really. So what we're going to do is we're going to go rod, reel, line all the way down to the knots and the swivels that you're going to use to set up for a bottom fishing technique and also fishing with a spinner or a spoon setup. So you guys stay tuned, you guys are going to learn a ton today, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to go catch these trout. First, what we're going to start with, guys, is we're going to take the rod out of the bag, we're going to set it all up, and we're going to show you exactly what you want to do to get your setup ready to go here. First off, we'll talk about the rod. This is one of the uh, Okuma Guide Select Pro Ultralight Rods that they just came out with. They're pretty cool. This is actually one of the first times I've seen this. They just recently came out with these rods. What they are is they're a seven foot six, two to six pound line rating. So what that does is it gives you a really good bit of sensitivity with your rod for fishing for the trout, but what it is is a lot of fun to fight any size of fish on these little rods. So these Guide Select Pros, I mean, they have these really cool little inlay on the cork and stuff now. So new little trout rod that they just came out with, that or the Okuma Salilo works really good, but anything in between that, that two to six to 10 pound rating is what you want, mainly just depending on how much weight you're gonna cast when you're using this. Um, but it's really my favorite weight for fighting these trout because Sometimes they're small and it's still a fun fight and sometimes they're big and you have a heck of a time getting them in. It's a lot of fun. So what I like to do, we're going to clip these tags off here. One thing not a lot of people do that I like to stress is you make sure to take this plastic off of the cork. What a lot of people do is they leave that on there because they think it makes their rod look brand new forever. But what it really does is it allows that moisture when you're out on the lake or on the river and it's raining outside. It allows that moisture to get in between that plastic and that cork and I've seen this stuff like if you leave your rods out in the garage or something and don't check on them, I've seen that water get underneath that plastic and actually make that cork just turn into mush and it turns it all moldy. So be sure even though it doesn't make it look quite as new, you want to look cool out there on the lake anyways because it looks like you know what you're doing if you have an old beat up rod. So make sure to take that plastic off of that cork because really all it's going to do is hurt you and not help you. So finish that here. All right, so what we're gonna go to next is this little Okuma RTX 30S. Why you're gonna use this 30 or the, the 2000 series? I like the 30 mainly because you can get enough line on there. You actually can use quite a bit bigger reel on these little two to six pound rods, but I like to stay right in this range just so it's nice and light for you. Take all this stuff off. And if you're like me, you put this all back in the box and save it forever for some reason, so. We're gonna do that here today, we don't wanna break habit. Tighten this bad boy down. The beautiful part of these little reels, it's kinda of like any model nowadays, but what I like is you can actually put the reel handle on either side of this reel. It's not really designated to one side, so whether you're lefty or righty, you can get it on there and get it on the right side, and you don't have to be all messed up every time you try to reel in, so. Tighten this bad boy down. Okay, now for the fun part, for the important part, putting the line on. So what I'm gonna put on here is braided line. Kind of contrary to a lot of fish, or trout fishermen, excuse me, is using this braided line. What I like to do with using the braided line is use it nice and light. And what that allows you to do is cast a very long distance with a small amount of weight. That light line and that braided line coming off the reel so smooth allows you to get a lot smaller diameter than you ever could using a fluorocarbon or a, some kind of monofilament line. So. What I have here is just uh, 10 pound P-line uh, braid in the forest green color. Sometimes I'd like to use maybe a, the high-vis color as well, but this is what we have today and this is what we're gonna use. So it works just fantastic. But again, having that 10 pound, you know, under a, t uh, under a 20 pound rating on that braid is gonna make it a lot easier for you to cast. So what I'm gonna do here is probably the more tricky part that most people have. What I like to do with this is I like to give it a couple wraps. It's a little bit different than you'd see him do it in the tackle store, but it does the job for me. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna make about four or five loops inside that line, just like so. Basically, I'm, gonna, I'm tying a fisherman's knot around the main line on this braid, so. I'm gonna make four or five loops, just through a normal clinch knot. 
gonna take that, put it back through the eye. Again, this is just creating a loop on my line. Pull that bad boy down. Perfect. I'm gonna trim that little tag end off there. This would be a lot easier to see, of course, if you had, really, if, as long as you get this connected to there somehow, whether you just tie a bazillion knots or whether you do a professional's job like they do at the tackle shop, um, usually you can get it to stay on there. What I like to do after this, just in, for safe purposes, is I throw a couple half hitch knots over the top of that spool. And that's gonna ensure that even when you do get down to that small bit of line, it'll actually be hanging on there and grab and break the lure off, not all of the line that you have on your reel and leave you spooled on the side of the bank. So now the fun part begins. So what I like to do when you're, you know, there's a lot of old stories and old tricks on how to take and get this line off of here properly onto your reel. What I like to do is just rotate it. The whole time I'm going through, I flip this disc back and forth going each way so that it complete, it keeps untwisting that line as it goes onto my reel. And what that's gonna do is allow it to not come blown off my reel in a big rat's nest uh, as soon as I go to make my very first cast. So what I'll do here, I'm gonna set this down. I'm gonna hold this right with my two index fingers right above my reel at my first guide, right about a foot and a half from the reel. And I'm just gonna slowly keeping some moderate pressure on that line keep reeling this nice and slowly until this spool fills up i like to fill them almost all the way right to about three quarters so i'm going to make about i don't know 50 cranks here and like i was just talking about a minute ago you see how that line starts to get somewhat twisted together it's going to be very hard to see because this line's dark i'm going to flip this over again and i'm going to take the line off just like so once again i'm going to do about 50 spins again and then i'm going to stop I'm gonna flip this bad boy over again. And what that's doing is it's pulling the line off the opposite direction each time so that I'm actually not twisting all my line onto my reel in the opposite direction that it's spooled onto this spool. So about 50 again, same thing. And this is one of those tricks that you learn after a long time of dealing with reels and messing them up, but I'm giving you guys the secrets now so that you can not have to suffer. All right, so now that we got the spool all filled up, this is really kind of what I want it to look like as you fill it up. You don't want to get all the way to the edge of the top of the spool and kind of have it on this kind of outcropping. Uh, what that does is it allows that line to slip off the top of the reel without you actually opening the bale. So you want to leave a little bit of that lip under there so that your line has something to grab onto. So that's what a full spool looks like. It's about anywhere from 100 to 110 yards of line on that reel. So what I'm gonna do now, you saw how I, when I went to string this through, I only ran it through my top guide. That's just kind of being lazy. It makes it a little easier to control the line as it's coming onto the, onto the reel. You don't have to put it all the way through all your guides. I like to put it from the reel back up through the guide. So now that I have this here, I'm gonna open this up. A little old trick that a lot of people don't know. To get this line through your guides, what I like to do is bend that thing in half so you have two bits of line to work with here and what that does is if you drop your line instead of it sliding all the way down your guides and out and making you redo it over and over again it just falls to the side and it catches so that it doesn't fall through that guide that you just put it through so I got that bent over there put that right through each one of these guides and I'm a little obsessive I like to make sure I don't miss any guides or anything like that so if you do miss some go ahead and just Pull it back out and restring it back through each one of these guides. They're all there for a reason. Sometimes if you get a little lazy and you don't make sure it's through all the guides and you use it anyways, it'll either wrap around your rod and you'll break a fish off, or it'll create a weak spot in your, in your rod and it'll actually break your fishing rod at that spot. So there we go. We have it all the way through there. What we're going to do next is we're going to set up with a bottom fishing technique, mainly power bait style and or a worm and a float or aired up worm. Really a lot of that we'll go over later and you can see in our other tutorials that we've made for trout fishing, how to fish each one of these methods. But what we're doing here is just showing you guys how to get set up, how to have the right setup from knots all the way through. So, so now that we have this line run through all of our guides, we're gonna set up a bottom fishing technique or something more of a style of fishing a worm or power bait off the bottom of the lake. So what we have here, we're gonna take our 10 pound 
separated here and we're going to do a sliding setup and why i'm going to do that is so that bite registers onto our rod tip a lot better than if you actually clamp down any kind of split shot or if you put any kind of inline weight on your line it'll actually hold your line to the bottom so when those fish bite it pulls your weight off the bottom before that bite registers if you have this on a sliding setup either these are little dave's tangle free weights you can use any style of in, or of sliding weight with this kind of metal clevis at the top of it that can slide up and down your line but what i'm going to use this for is being able to register that bite it kind of goes along the same lines as why we're using this braided line it's because it's a lot stronger and it doesn't have any stretch to it so when that, those trout bite at that good distance that you've casted that bite registers through the line a lot quicker than if you have that stretchy floor car fluorocarbon or any kind of monofilament line so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to take and i'm going to put this right through this guide really simple I'm going to string that through there and I'm just going to drop that. That's going to do its thing. So that you can see how that weight slides back and forth on that line. And what that does is when those fish bite, it goes straight to your rod tip rather than pulling the weight before you see that bite. So you got that sliding weight that's going to help a lot in seeing these bites and, and getting these trout. What I'm going to do from here is I'm going to take a little bead. Any color works. I like to use a little more natural colors, whether it be red or any kind of black color, depending on what kind of lake you're fishing. Something that's not gonna spook the fish off. But I'm gonna take that bead and I'm gonna put it right on my line, just below where I put this weight. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep my weight from sliding over my swivel that I'm gonna put on here in just a second. So what that does is it creates that little bit of a block so that your weight isn't moving up and down your leader and slides down to your bait. So here's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna take just a normal snap swivel here. I'm gonna take my, my line, I'm gonna go right through the eye. I'm gonna just tie a, a simple clinch knot, go about seven or eight wraps around the main line itself with that tag end. After you do that seven or eight wraps right there, you see how I have this little tag or that little eye right in front of the eye of the swivel there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my tag end of my braided line I'm gonna put it right through that little eye there. Some of you may need glasses for this. I lucked out and hit it first try. So what you're gonna do there is you're gonna pull that slow, nice and tight. Maybe give it a little wetness with some spit and bam, there's your swivel. You're hooked on there good with that 10 pound line. And now from here is where our leader line is gonna come into play. What we're gonna use here today is about a three to a four foot leader uh, with this P-line fluorocarbon and a six pound test. That fluorocarbon is really good because it's crystal clear. And in these stocked lakes and ponds, a lot of these fish get pressured pretty heavily. So you wanna use a lighter line and something clear so that they can not be scared off by your line. You can kind of get that stealth mode going and, and show them something that they don't see a lot. They don't like seeing those big bulky presentations in these lakes as often because of all the pressure that they see. So what I'm gonna do from here, I'm gonna go about four feet or so, pull off about four feet of that fluorocarbon and cut that off right there. So I'm gonna take my fluorocarbon line, I'm gonna tie it right to the end of the snap swivel. And why I'm gonna tie it to the snap swivel is so it's really easy to go and change in and out of the style of baits that you're using. Uh, whether you're fishing a worm or you're fishing a power bait or a power egg, you, might want to, you may want a different leader length or a different hook size. So it'll make it easier for you to be able to just unhook, slide that off of there, slide your new leader back on, tie your knot and get going. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that same clinch knot that we did before about seven or eight wraps with the tag end around the main line. I'm gonna take that tag end, I'm gonna go right back through the little eye here next to my swivel, not through the eye of the swivel, don't be confused. Get that wet again, slide it tight. Trim our little tag end there. So we're getting there guys, all we need now is our hook. So what we have here is we have our, our weight to the bead, up to the swivel, that's where my braided line ends, and then we go to my fluorocarbon leader, about three and a half feet, and now we're gonna tie our hook on. So what we're gonna start with on this stuff is the power eggs on this setup. So we're gonna take this here. These are our mustad trout hooks. And I'm gonna take the worm hook here because this one is best for this kind of setup because it has these little barbs on the back of the shank of the hook. And that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna keep those power eggs or power bait or worm whatever you're gonna be fishing on the bottom with on this hook as you go to cast it out into the center of the lake. So I'm gonna, again, just do a simple clinch knot right to this hook, right through the guide, just like so. About eight twists, back through the eye of the line, not the hook. Okay. 
and there we go. There's our first setup, everybody. And again, this is for fishing on the bottom with some kind of power bait or some kind of power egg or worm or any other bait. These mealworms work very good. We're gonna show you guys how to use those in a little bit. But this is how you wanna fish on the bottom. We're gonna show you another setup here in just a second, and that's gonna be how to actually set up a spinner setup. So we're gonna get the line on that reel. We're gonna show you how to put that bumper on. We're gonna show you what you wanna use and kind of go through some of the options to use for the spinner setup. So, but this is our normal, basically the starter rig for catching these trout. And why I like to fish this way is because you make sure you're at the right depth. The fish really like to be on the bottom of the lake in most situations, in most places. So this gets you down and allows you to feel those sensitive bites because that lead slides up and down on your line there. So now that we got our other rod set up, we're gonna set up on this one, the spinner setup, which is probably by far the easiest way to set up to go catch these trout, especially in the springtime. When the water's a little bit warmer and these trout I have a tendency to be a little more active. They'll want to chase these spinners and spoons and cast masters down that we're going to show you guys. So what I got here, I got my 10 pound all the way down. I'm going to grab this little swivel here, a little mustad swivel. Gold or black works either way. You might want to have both just in case you, your buddy next to you starts catching them and the only thing different between you two is the black swivel. So gold or black works just fine. I'm going to do my normal clinch knot once again right to the end of this swivel. And for this kind of adaption, I like to use a small swivel. These are size 14 uh, mustad swivels. And so that size 14 all the way, you know, probably to 10 is about as big as I'd go, which is a pretty big swivel, but depends on where you're fishing, the co color of the water. But today I'm gonna stay with a pretty small one and that's at 14. Why I'm gonna use the snap swivel in these kind of lakes or ponds is so I can switch to what I'm using quicker. Um, it makes it really easy to just take one spinner off, put one on, and these trout anywhere tend to be very bitey. You know, there's usually only one thing that works really, really super good uh, given the day and conditions and time of year that you're fishing. So be sure to have a little bit of everything and be sure to be changing as you're out there on the lake all day long. Okay, now that I got that swivel on, normal little quench knot, I'm gonna grab this open this clasp. And what I have here is a little Panther Martin spinner. I love these things for these trout. I don't know why they love them quite so much. These little deer hair tails that they have on these spinners are great for putting on a little bit of scent, adding anything to that, some Procure scent, some Slamola trout, whatever you want. I like the gold blade in a nice clear lake, kind of helps stand out against that like dark turbid water. So here we are, there's our setup. Got our little Panther Martin on there. And so what we have here, guys, is basically the two easiest setups to set up with, the two most effective, and the two that I take to the lake all the time. And I like to have both. Sticking with one thing all day long can really hinder you in some situations. So having a couple of options of how you're fishing, having multiple styles of power bait like we have here, using different colors, scents along all the lines, really kind of help improve your fishing success on the lake and in a pond, anywhere they stock these beautiful little trout. And it's a good way to go out and get you some dinner. And it's a good way to get anybody into fishing. It's kind of the building block of a fisherman is going to the lake and fishing for these trout. So, so last but not least, we're gonna go with the old faithful fixed float bobber setup for these fish. This, you can fish any kind of bait imaginable. You can catch, catch grasshoppers in the grass or you can use night crawlers or mealworms or any kind of power bait, anything you want. And you can use this fixed float setup to get down to the fish and set it in the one vicinity that you want. I love it too, because it's always fun to watch a good bite on the bobber too. You watch that thing bob around out there and then it sinks under and we all love watching a bobber go down. So what I'm gonna do first here, we've got my main line straight down here. This is my fluorocarbon leader again. I have a bumper tied on to my um, braided line on this rod. So I tied about a 10 to 15 foot bumper with a blood knot to that braided line, which I now have my bumper here. And what I do that is so I, you have that little bit less visibility down to your bait uh, as you're fishing for these fish. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use one more of these beautiful little worm hooks. And why I'm tying the hook on first is because I don't know what depth I want my bobber set at quite yet. So it's gonna depend on where we're fishing in the lake, whether it be five feet, 10 feet, it can get a little bit difficult to cast if you're fishing anywhere over about six to seven feet. So I'm gonna tie my hook on here. And my next step after this is gonna be adding my weight. And why you're gonna to have to do that because most 
typically a lot of the different baits that you're going to use for trout are designed to float mainly for that bottom setup that we showed you earlier to hit the bottom and float up usually you'd want to make your leader length a little bit more adjusted on that kind of setup to how much vegetation is on the bottom of the lake so we use about a three and a half foot leader you might want to go three four or five however much vegetation you think you need to get above to get those fish so what we're doing here is dropping it down to the top of that vegetation and holding whatever we have floating near that strike zone. So I'm gonna take after this a couple of these split shots. And these are size six. You can use size sevens and use one or you can use smaller ones and use multiples, but I'm only gonna use two today. And a lot more of the weight here is to get you down and also helps you cast. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take, I'm gonna set my my leader length at about three and a half feet. You can go deeper, shallower, whatever. Again, you're gonna adjust all this as you see what the fish are kind of showing you once you get out to the lake. You're gonna to react to the bite, whether you need to go deeper, shallower, so on and so forth. So we got those bad boys on there. So I'm gonna take these split shot. I'm gonna give myself about a three, three and a half foot leader and save your teeth, everybody. And don't use your teeth to pinch these down like grandpa always did. Use some good pliers and get them right where you want to. Don't squeeze them too hard in case you want to slide those up and down and it'll end up damaging your line. So now the tricky part, now the part that normally gets people. So what we're gonna do here is on this normal Danielson bobber, we call them just the old red and white float. This thing has a little spring, a little spring mechanism inside of it with these two hooks. See this side has the hook as well. What we're gonna do first, we're gonna take the red tab on top, we're gonna push down and we're gonna take our line and hook it right in that tab. What I like to do is I like to do at least two maybe three wraps around that line there. What that's gonna allow you to do is move, not doing so many wraps or only doing one is gonna allow you to slide that bobber up and down. But we're gonna be carrying this down to the lake so I'm not gonna set it at quite the depth yet. So from there, I'm gonna to go to the top and only push down on the red tab, not the little wire piece that's in the middle of it. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing again. I'm gonna take that, I'm gonna make two wraps around that little post. I'm gonna let that go and there we have it. That bobber's sitting there good. So you see our setup here. We have the red float down to our weight, which is gonna carry our bait down to whatever depth that we want. You can move those weights around, being that they're split shots, down to our worm hook. So again, you can use any style of bait with this. This is probably one of the more classic ways to fish, of course, depending on how deep of a lake you're fishing. If you're gonna be fishing a deep lake, you're gonna to wanna to use that bottom setup that we showed you. If you're gonna be throwing spinners, you can kinda of use that anywhere. That's the beauty of the spinner. So one thing we wanna say from all of us here at Addicted is we really appreciate you guys watching these videos. So what we really want you to do is comment below Tell us what you want to see. Tell us what you like about these videos. Ask all the questions you want because we can answer anything, any question that you have in these comment strings below. So comment, comment, comment. Share this stuff out there and don't forget to go subscribe to this YouTube channel to see all these new videos we have coming out every day. We're going to be coming at you with a lot of trout stuff in the near future. It's going to help you guys get out there and enjoy this beautiful bounty that we have and it's catching these nice tasty little fish that we have all over the country here. So be sure to subscribe, share this out to everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you out there in like